Okay. So we just spent some time looking at the excited states of the Klein Gordon, the quantum Klein Gordon theory of a real scalar field. And you know, the whole point of doing that is that's kind of the simplest theory you could think of. So if we want to do more complex theories, uh, we should start there and then work by analogy to figure to figure things out in the more difficult theories. So the next most difficult theory we could look at is a theory with a complex scalar field. So this is something we looked at before. Uh, so we can basically, if we want to quantize this theory, we just work by analogy. We just do the same kinds of things we were doing with the Klein-Gordon field. So we will expand our field psi in terms of raising and lowering operators. And so you'll notice that here we have a B operator and a C operator instead of them both being A's. The motivation behind that is uh, we want to retain as much of the form of our field expansion as before because that worked out so well. But now that our field is, uh, it doesn't have to be real, there's no reason that those two operators, uh, A and, you know, before it had to be A and A dagger so that when you took the complex conjugate, you got the same thing back so that the field was real. Uh, so now we don't need that. So these two operators can be different. And so already, uh, what's that, what that's telling us is that there are two kinds of particles uh, that we can create when we, uh, after we quantize this field. So we'll, we'll see that later. So once you have that, you can, um, you know, get psi, psi dagger very easily. And then pi and pi, pi dagger are also easy to find. So yeah, I'll just write them there. Um, and then you basically, so from this Lagrangian, we could compute the Hamiltonian. And then once we have our Hamiltonian in terms of the conjugate momentum and fields, we could just uh, plug in these things and then use our, so our each of our creation and annihilation operators will satisfy the same, the usual commutation relations. Uh, there's just two of them now, that's the only difference. And if we do that, what we would find is, for the Hamiltonian, once we've normal ordered everything, is this. So it's basically exactly the same as before, only again, we, we have two particles that we could create with, it. Uh, or two particles that we can create instead of just one. So it just looks like the same Hamiltonian as before, only two terms. And so uh, again, these particles for uh, both of these particles will have mass m, and then we'll have zero spin, and they are, they are bosons. But then the obvious question is, what is the relationship between these two particles? And to figure that out, all we have to do is look at the conserved charge. So the conserved charge we worked out for this theory was this thing. And once we've written that in terms of our fields, our conjugate momentum field and our psi field, we could plug these in, work it all out, blah, blah, blah. And we would find that the conserved charge was this. And this is interesting because uh, this is two terms here where each one is basically the number operator for uh, the respective particles. So the conserved charge is the number of C particles minus the number of B particles. And basically what that means is, uh, what we're going to interpret this as meaning, is that the C and B particles are antiparticles to each other. So if you imagine, you know, the particle has a charge and the antiparticle has the opposite charge, then obviously um, to conserve charge, uh, the number, the relative number of 
particles has to stay, stay the same. So if you create a C particle, you must annihilate the B particle and vice versa. Uh, so that's, um, that's the main thing. So uh, there's not much benefit to going through all of the math involved in you know, deriving the Hamiltonian. It all works out in a very similar way. Um, the only important thing is that you've worked out, you, sh you should work out the Hamiltonian in the Klein-Gordon case so that you see how it works out. But uh, yeah, when, and once you've done that, there's not much point in uh, going through it all again. It all works out very similarly. So again, in this theory, uh, so it's interesting, once, once we introduce a complex scalar field, what that gives us are particles and antiparticles, as opposed to just a single type of particle with the uh, real Klein-Gordon field theory. And we'll see more complicated things happen as we go on.